Hello everyone and welcome to today's podcast on die cast lubricants and plunger life in high pressure die casting HPDC. I'm excited to share some valuable insights into the lubrication process and its critical role in ensuring the efficiency and longevity of die casting operations. In HPDC, lubrication is essential in many aspects. Just like an engine, the machine bushings require continuous lubrication. Moving components of the die, such as slide cores, ejector pins, and leader pins, also need lubrication. For some parts, like the ejector plate guide pins and bushings, lubrication during die assembly between production runs is enough. However, other components need ongoing lubrication. Specifically, in HPDC aluminum, the cavity faces and core pins must be lubricated every cycle. Additionally, in cold chamber aluminum casting, the plunger tip requires lubrication with every cycle. You might often hear the terms die lube and die release used interchangeably. Die lube is applied to create a barrier between the molten material and the die steel. A significant part of the die cast cycle time is dedicated to applying and drying off or blowing off excess die lube. In fact, studies on aluminum die casting cycle times show that the spray and blow off process can consume nearly 35 to 55 percent of the entire cycle. Custom spray manifolds that can focus the spray more accurately have demonstrated significant cycle time savings. Die lubricants represent a major day-to-day -day expense in a die casting operation. This includes not only the purchase, distribution, and application of the dye lube but also dealing with the overspray and mist. The waste stream must be collected and disposed of with environmental considerations in mind, both in the shop and during transportation and at disposal sites. In the 1960s, water-based dye lubricants were not as common as they are today. All-based lubes were known for creating a shiny carbon skin on the cavities, aiding in release. However, water-based lubes have become the accepted standard over time. People had to adapt to different behaviors since water-based lubes don't leave a carbon trace on the cavity as all-based lubes do. Another difference is that all-based sprays would wick around behind slide cores, whereas water-based lubes tend to bead up and behave more like a line of sight, making it harder to reach the back sides of slide cores. The short-term solution to this problem is to spray longer to force the lubricant around to the back side of the slide core. However, installing multiple focused spray nozzles greatly improves the effectiveness of the spray. For larger slides, installing a spray nozzle in the holder block to spray directly at slide core surfaces that are otherwise hidden or blind can reduce the need to overspray and increase efficiency. Ideally, the sprayer would be on a separate timer to avoid overspraying and wasting lube. Now, let's discuss plunger tips, cold chambers, and lubrication. Due to high metal temperatures, Tips and cold chambers require lubrication to reduce the chance of soldering. While most plunger tips have some form of internal cooling, cold chamber cooling is less common. When working with 390 alloys or newer high ductility low iron alloys, cold chamber cooling is especially beneficial. The wear on cold chambers and tips is significantly greater with these alloys compared to typical 380 by 383 alloys. To achieve the best possible life for your plunger tips, ensure you have the recommended water flow. Typically, for a 3 and a half tip, this would be around 5 gallons per minute GPM. Another way to look at it is to provide 0.5 gallons per minute per square inch. Thank you for joining today's podcast. I hope this information helps you optimize your HPDC processes and extend the life of your equipment. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask.